Hey friends, thanks for stopping by. In this video, I just want to go quickly over how to edit a audio and video podcast using Descript. I've been using Descript for the last couple months on my own podcast, MindMeld, and it's been an absolute game changer. It's completely sped up my post-production process, and it's really helped me level up my podcast. So if you're looking to learn how to use Descript, this will be a great little overview, and I'll show you exactly how I transcribe the podcast, how I edit both the audio and video, how I can remove filler words, create show notes with proper timestamps, add music overlay, and of course, how to export the audio, video, captions, and show notes so you can use it for your podcast. So if you're not already using Descript, make sure to use the link in the description below. Full disclosure, that is an affiliate link. Descript does not pay me for this video, so it helps out if you can use that link. It costs you absolutely nothing extra, but it helps me out a little bit. So if you enjoyed this video and it helps you out, consider using it. And if you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up and also make sure to subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. Let's get right into it and I'll show you exactly how to edit your podcast. All right, so when you first open up Descript, you'll probably have an empty workspace. So the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go and click on new project. And just for the purposes of this, I'm just going to call it Descript walkthrough and hit create project. So the first thing that you want to do is you want to import your media. So you're going to click here on this library thing and you're going to click on add new and then file. So my files are here on a desktop and I'm going to be working with three files here. And just for the purpose of this, I just want to give you a little bit of context on these files. I record all of my podcasts remotely using Riverside.fm. It is amazing. It allows you to record locally and have separate audio and video tracks for every single guest. So this is what I use to get high quality content on the production side. So once again, if you want to try this out, go in the link in the description below. If you want to check that out, it's been absolutely amazing. Once I've recorded my podcast, I have separate tracks for the audio and video, and I sync everything up in Premiere Pro first. And I sync up all of the video and audio. So it's just one video track that we're working with. And then for the audio tracks, you'll notice here, both of them are already mastered. So once they're synced up in Premiere Pro, I bring it into Logic to mix it. So I just like to do it beforehand. And the reason being is anytime I create more clips or different versions of these podcasts, I don't want to have to go and mix it and master it every time. So at this point, now that we're back in Descript, what I want to do is select both of these audio tracks. So myself and my guest, and I like to import both of them together. So there's both speakers. They're already synced up and I'm just going to open them. All right. So now I've imported both of the audio files. And what you want to do here is with them both selected still, you want to click on the transcribe two files right here. And I'm just going to move myself up a bit. And it says multi-track detected. So that's important. So what you want to actually do is create a sequence for it. This is really important. You want to have a sequence for each one of these tracks. And you want to have one fat sequence here. So let's click on create sequence. And this is where we're going to transcribe it. So the first thing you want to do is actually name your speaker. So luckily, I'm pretty good with my naming convention. So I know who's who. And I'm just going to type in my name here, Josh. And this here is my brother, Mitch. So I'm going to add him as a speaker. So there's kind of three ways here that you can transcribe. I use automatic and that just uses Descript's AI to transcribe the audio. There's also White Club it takes a little bit longer and it takes humans. So they have humans actually doing all that for you. So the automatic is like it's 90% effective. And I'll show you how you can edit yourself. So if you don't want to pay extra for the white glove, you can just do it automatically. The third option here is to import a transcript. So if you use another service like rev.com or something, you could definitely import the transcript. But for these purposes, I'm just going to go with automatic and I'm just going to hit on transcribe. All right. So this will take a little while and we'll come back as soon as it's finished. A few moments later. And we finished transcribing. So Descript probably took about a minute or two to transcribe this. And you'll notice now on the bottom here, now we have the sort of the waveforms here. And you can see these are massive waveforms because it's already mixed and mastered. But what you'll notice here is there's two colors. There's pink for me and there's orange for Mitch. So now you can know which person is speaking. And what I actually want to do next here 
is you'll see um, that we do have a sequence. So this has created a sequence. If we go back to our media library, you'll see now there's a sequence here. Okay. So the next part we want to do here is actually add the video. So there's two ways to open up the sequence. And you can either click on this button here to open sequence, or more likely you're going to want to learn this shortcut here because you're going to do this a lot in the editing. But if you click down here on the actual timeline, if you're on Mac, click on Command Shift and the letter O, and that'll open up the sequence. So now we're in the sequence here. Um, basically, you want to create a new track here. So I'm going to create a new track for the video, and I'm going to call it Video. All right, so I'm going to go back to the beginning of the playhead to the beginning here because I'm going to import the video. And once again, we're going to go back to our media library. We're going to click on Add New and File. And now I'm going to do the synced video here. So you might have more than one video that you want to cut between. That's totally fine. But in, in this case, I'm just going to show one video that I've already uh, synced up and edited in Premiere. This will take a little while to add the video, but once it's in, I will then add it to the sequence. OK, and our video has been imported. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to drag the video onto the sequence here. So I'm going to bring this to the very beginning of the playhead. Boom. So now you'll notice that there's actually video here. So if I start scrubbing over here, you'll actually see the video playing, which you can see I've done the split screener already. And you can see there's still some audio here. So the reason why there's still audio and I didn't export the video without it is just to make sure that it is indeed synced up here, which I've gone through this before. It definitely is. And it's funny because you can see the difference in the waveform here. So this is like the unmixed, unmastered version in the video, like just raw. And look how big it is here. Um, after being mix and mastered using compression and limiters and all that. So if you want to know how I mix and master in Logic to get this sweet, sweet sound, put a comment down below and I'll be happy to make a video there. I just want to see if people are actually interested in that. But of course, now we don't want to hear the audio here. So I'm going to mute this track so that we just hear the mix and mastered. Otherwise, it sounds weird. It'll sound like robotic almost and kind of like phased. So we will definitely get back here into the sequence for some editing. But first, I just want to do a little bit of housekeeping and show you how I set up the compositions. So let's exit the sequence here by clicking X up here. OK, so we are back in the main editor. Now you can see there's a video on the right side. We see our script here on the left and then our timeline and waveform along the bottom here. So what I like to do here is I actually like to rename this to like something like this, like just do not edit. So I like to have a do not edit or import composition just in case I'm messing around with a transcript or I'm doing some editing. I like to have a version that's completely raw and untouched so that in case I ever need to go back, I at least have it. Oh, also, you might have this untitled composition from before. So you can also just delete that one. So you'll have this like do not edit import. And what I like to do here is I like to duplicate this and have a working version. So once you duplicate it, I will rename this to something like uh, main sequence full episode. So now we have our full episode sequence here. And you can think of these sequences almost as documents, like a Google Doc, right? So when we go back in here, you can actually see that it has, you know, the, the words transcribe like a Google Doc. And you'll also notice that if you just imported a video, it'll probably take some time to process. So I'm going to let it process so it's a little bit quicker to edit and we'll come right back in, in a couple seconds. OK, so we're back. I'm just going to move my little bubble here and kind of just go over how I'm going to tackle editing this. So there's kind of three things you want to be doing all the time as you're going through this whole episode. And that might be removing some gaps, maybe removing words. But the main thing I actually want to do here is first, I want to create some more screen real estate. So let's hide the track inspector, which is this bar here. We don't really need it right now. So let's just hide that. 
I'm going to move myself over here, make this video a little bit bigger. All right, so now we see three main things here. We see the script, we see the timeline here, and we see the video, and everything's all synced up. So if I click over here on legit, uh, you'll see it actually goes into the word legit here, and we can zoom in and out. So there's a few things that you want to be doing while you're editing the podcast. And the first thing you want to actually understand is the difference between the timeline down here and the sequence. So this is what's called non-destructive. Okay, so what I mean by non-destructive here is I have all of this text highlighted. If I right click and I go and delete it, you'll see it's gone from here. But if I go back to the command shift and O and open up the sequence, so when I open up the sequence, you can see that that little section that I had previously deleted in the editor is actually still here in the sequence. This is kind of important to know because everything in the sequence gets carried over into the different compositions. So just know that anything that you do edit here will get edited on all of the different compositions. So I'll just give you an example here. Uh, let's just exit out of this and let's just command Z this to make sure that we have our text back here. So now if I were to then duplicate this composition, let's just say, Okay, so I have the copy of, okay. So here's the copy, all right? So let's just say, just for these purposes, I go into the sequence, I edit this sequence, and just for the sake of this, I wanna actually remove this entire first little chunk, just so you can know. So let's just say I removed it, I'm in the copy now. So if I go back over to the main composition, so if I go back to the beginning here, it's actually gone. So let's open up that sequence again. You can also right click and go to edit sequence. Um, it's gone. This carries across all of your compositions. So just understand how that works. I'm gonna obviously bring this back and let's click on X. Okay, so now we understand the difference between the sequence and this timeline. The great thing is, like I said, this is non-destructive. So if I were to remove stuff from here or remove words from here, that's just affecting this composition. That's not going to affect the actual audio. So the one thing I actually want to show you is there will probably be times where you definitely want to edit things out of the sequence. So here's a really good example here. I'm going to just make this a little bit larger so you can see. You can see here I was speaking and there was a little bit of overlay here. There's no way to edit here in the script, but like there's nothing to select from Mitch. It's, it's just taking mine, right? So whenever there's an overlay like this, when someone's talking over, the only way to edit this is to edit it in the sequence. So again, I'm going to use the uh, shortcut command shift and O. And now we have our multi track. So now we have all the different tracks here. I'm going to bring this up. So now we can see here if I were to zoom in, um, this is the area where Mitch kind of spoke over me. So if I want to get rid of it, you just highlight over it and then hit delete. So now that area is gone. And now what you can do is you can take the ends of these and drag them over. So this is great too. This is another thing that I usually do. You don't need to, but if there's any like little piece of audio that you don't want, you can just hover over and delete. So what you could do is before you even edit the transcript and stuff like that, and you're like, oh, like there's like background noise and you want to remove the background noise, get rid of that. So obviously you do this in the mixing and mastering phase. Like I've used a bunch of effects that gets rid of a lot of that, but maybe there's times where you're kind of just hovering over and you notice like someone talks over or there's like, hmm, stuff like that. You're just going to hover over it and hit delete. So this will, like I said, the sequence carries over multiple compositions. So anything you delete here, it will be gone everywhere else. Okay. So let's go back to the editor. So there's sort of three things I do to edit as I'm going on and I'm listening to the episode. The first one is you can remove words, obviously. So there's two ways to delete areas. So if you want to get rid of something, you can either highlight it on the actual script, like, nah, I don't want that area and hit delete. Okay, so you can do that and you can hit delete again. So there's no extra space there. Another great way to remove space, maybe you don't want any space between here. You can actually 
click and drag a word and start bringing it over. That's pretty awesome. So maybe there's times here where like, let's listen to this little, little area here. <laughs> yeah. Who knows what, what will be mind melding about that's So maybe I don't want that gasp there and I just want it to start from here. So I can click and drag this area and bring it over. So that's pretty cool. And then once again, I would see, oh, there's a little bit of uh, overlay here. So I'll just open up the sequence. I'll highlight over this and delete it. Now, if I hit escape as well, I can get back and you'll see it's gone. So this is pretty cool. Okay, so you can do that as much or as little as you want. Like maybe there's bigger gaps somewhere where like you don't want to have gaps. So I just kind of depends on your editing style, right? So if you don't want any gaps, you want to have like sort of like these jump cuts, you can go and start just dragging these over, dragging these over. Um, you can remove certain words if you want, say we wanted to get rid of this. If you click this over, it'll actually start going back over. But like I said, this doesn't remove anything in the actual sequence. So those words are still there if you ever want to go back or maybe in if we go back to our other compositions that do not edit, that stuff is still there. So like go ham here, delete words that you don't want or any weird stuff, because you can always go back to this import version that has everything. Okay, so that's how you edit the audio and the video simultaneously, right? Because if I'm moving this, it is editing the audio and the video for me. So we'll have a nice little jump cut. What you might want to do is actually start editing the transcript. If you know stuff is not accurate and you want to fix that, there's some really handy tools that Descript has now. These tools I'm going to be using, I'm going to be holding down the letters on my keyboard, Q, W, and E. And you can see as I'm doing that, holding down Q, you'll see an A, an AA. And what this will allow me to do is I can capitalize and uncapitalize words. Holding down W will allow you to change punctuation. So if you want to remove a period, change it into a comma, etc. And then holding down E allows you to actually change the word. So here's a good example. So I'm going to just play this and you tell me what you hear. I don't know what kind of mind melding activities we're going to get into, but I'm pretty excited. Okay, so here obviously is, it's an interesting word. He's saying that we're mind melding, but the AI here read mind meld and so if i want to change the meld and to melding what i would do is i would hover over this and you can see this little pop-up in the middle of the screen here i can either correct it by tapping on e or i can overdub it with d so i'm not going to get into overdub in this video but what i'm going to be doing to fix this is just tap on e so now i can actually change this word to mind melding and hit enter to correct it. Boom, mind melding activities. So here's an example here where you might want to fix punctuation and hold down W. So Mitch says here, everyone knows that ad, right? Maybe I don't want right to be capitalized. What I can do is I can hold down Q, tap on it. And then maybe here I want this to be a comma instead of a period. So I can hold down W, click it and it will turn into a comma. So when you hold down W and click it, it, it sort of goes between period, comma, and then nothing. So you can get rid of that easily. All right, so the next thing I wanna show you is how to remove filler words. So there's quite a bit here in this sentence. You know, he said they many times. So there's a couple different ways you can go about fixing this. Of course, you can just simply highlight these words and you can delete them. Now we end up with this. Uh, I can command Z that. And once again, you can zoom in here at the bottom and you can pull this back. That's great too. But let's just say you wanted to remove all of the filler words, right? So you can see that there are a bunch of filler words that are underlined here. So this is pretty crazy. So you go over here to the project search. And over here where it says text, click on that and go to filler words. So now it's going to highlight all of the filler words in this podcast. So what you can do, let's just say you want to get rid of all of these. Click on ignore and then go to apply all. And Descript will apply this to all of your filler words. 
So there's about 3,000 words that were removed. And you can see here, the they, they are all crossed out. So Descript already chopped all this up for me. So it's pretty good. This sounds pretty good. So it's getting rid of all of these filler words. Like it's everywhere. Okay, like it's pretty cool. So yeah, sometimes it's good. And this is a great way to get rid of all of your filler words. Okay. So you don't really have to do that by hand or manually. You can see that Descript just chopped up so much. You can see where these different uh, areas are, where it has been cut out. Sometimes it might not sound right. So you can always go in and fix some of that stuff. Um, you can always add it back in by just dragging it. And you can add it back in there. But that's how you can get rid of all of your filler words. I'm going to show you how I do show notes. And what I do here for the show notes is I use the comment feature. So this will allow me to create timestamped show notes because all of the comments have a timestamp on it. Here's an example. Let's just say I want to highlight all of this area and create a comment on it. You can just click on comment here. And so add a little bubble here. So all of this was the intro. So I'm just going to call this introduction and hit post. So you'll see now that the comments show up here. And also on the right, you can also show all the comments right here. So I'm just going to hide that once again. Anytime I find a really cool thing or an interesting tidbit that I want to add in show notes, I will just highlight it here and just be like, Mitch is very bullish on, on YouTube. And I will post that. So what's good is as I go through here and I'll just, you know, do like another show note. You know, scrolling down, scrolling down, scrolling down. Oh, there's another show note. I don't know. Just an example, right? Just really quick. So now I have a bunch of show notes here. And now if I go to the comments, we can see that I have all my show notes and they have timestamps. So here's my timestamp. Mitch is very bullish on YouTube. What I would then do is I would, you know, copy this into, you know, Google Docs or Notion, whatever you want to use. But what I would really love to see, and hopefully someone from Descript is watching this or, or something, but I really love to be able to just export all of these comments. Like there's no way to do that right now. So right now it is a little bit of a manual process to copy over each show note and, and have the timestamps, but this is how I do it. So I just, I'm using the comment feature by just highlighting commenting and just calling it here's another show note right so that's how i do the show notes with great timestamps. and it's also helpful for creating clips right so if ever uh, i'm done with the episode and i want to make a clip on how mitch is very bullish on youtube what i would then do is i would click on the comment it goes right to that area and all i can do here to create a little clip is highlight it all that area that i want right click and go clip to composition and new. This is pretty cool. So now I've just created a little clip that I can use for social media or anything else like that. And you can see here, this was named clips from main composition. And I can rename this to Mitch is bullish on YouTube. Okay, so now I have this, just this area. I'm very, very bullish on YouTube just because. And again, I can edit this as much as I want. And I got this clip. So if this was longer, this could be like a little YouTube clip that you see for a podcast. So that's a great way to make a bunch of these clips. And what I would honestly do is create a ton of these. So I'll create a whole other video on how I create social media clips and YouTube clips. So let me know in the comments uh, if that's something you're interested in. And I will definitely create that video. But I'm going to go back to the main composition. So you might see in some podcasts that there is a little stinger before the episode actually begins. So you can do this two ways. Um, you can just take a part directly from this composition, or you can go back into these compositions. Remember, we made this little clip. So maybe I want to use this for my intro. So what I would do is I would just like highlight this area. I would copy it by hitting Command or Control C. I would go back to the main composition here. And at the very top, I just make a little gap by hitting enter. So right here, I'm going to just paste in that little area. 
Great. And you'll see that it showed up on the timeline here right before this episode. So this is great if you want to like rearrange stuff or have like in my case, like a little stinger. So the next thing I usually do is add a little bit of a music overlay. Now that I have this stinger, my music sort of fades over this area here and then it plays into this intro. So what I usually do is I put the playhead to about here where I want it to cue in and I'm going to add my music. So first I just need to import the file. So I have it here. Here's the intro. Let's open that up. Uh, obviously, I don't need to transcribe it. So what I do here is I just drag it on to the script here. I just bring it right here. OK, so you'll see something really interesting how Descript handles these music overlays. You can see it created a new track over it. And what's really cool is I can drag the track back or I can hold shift to move the pin anchor. OK, so what does that mean? So that pin anchor, this little blue thing, if I hold shift and move this over, it'll move the anchor back, right? So you can see it's it's over here on the script. You can see that it's with Mitch and I kind of want that. If I were to hold shift and move it over, you can see it moves over here. OK, so we want this anchor to be right about here, right where the drop is actually, right where this um, this little stinger comes in. So if I hold shift and I can move it back just before that area. So this little blue uh, speaker shows up here. OK, so I have the cue exactly where I want it because that's where it drops, right? You'll see that the the video changes. But I want the music to come in earlier. I want the music to actually overlay over Mitch's little intro. And then you can see there's like a little drop over here. I want that drop to go in right when this little uh, animation comes in. So without holding shift, if I just click and drag the top here and I just move it, you can see I can move the clip back. But what's really important here is this stays in place. The little anchor, this little blue anchor stays in place so that I know that the cue is right here. So I want to just move this, move this back a bit. And if I zoom back in, I'm going to try to time this drop so that um, it plays at the right time. Let's go back a bit. YouTube. Perfect. OK, so the music comes in perfectly. But now we have another issue here. Uh, if I go to playback, this audio is probably going to be way too loud. Does anybody I talk to, really, even entrepreneurs, even some of my mentors, they only use YouTube and they, they love YouTube. Okay, so what I actually want to do here is I want to have like a slow build up for this audio. So if I right click here, I can go add volume keyframe. That's kind of important there. And then down here, I'll do another one. So I'll go add volume keyframe. So down here, I want this to be like zero, infinity, like nothing. And then here, I want this to be at 100%. And then maybe around here, I want it to be like halfway. So I'll add another volume keyframe and this can kind of move up. So maybe it goes something like this. So you have like a little bit of a build up here, or actually I'll move it over a little bit more even. So it's kind of like this. So let's see how this sounds now. Does anybody I talk to really, even entrepreneurs, even some of my mentors, they only use YouTube and they, they love YouTube. All right. Welcome to Mind Meld, Mitch. Perfect. OK, so there you go. There you have it. So that's how you can add your intro music or any kind of music overlay. OK, so now we have our episode done. It's been edited up. I have my stinger. I have my intro music synced up with my animation, and then we get into the episode. I've already made my show notes. Here's one more thing, actually. I want to bring this back. Remember the show notes I made with the timestamps? I made these timestamps before I added this intro in, which added an extra nine seconds. What's good is that because I highlighted this, all of my show notes are tied to this little piece of text. So. Even if I were to copy this like a million times, I'm not going to do a million, don't worry. But let's just say I were to copy it. I just want you to take a look at the timestamp here. So if I hit, were to hit enter and I added this again, you'll see the timestamp changed. 
So this is really important, right? Because otherwise it would get all messed up if you added in that intro. So I'm just going to get rid of that stuff. So now we have our episode and we have our timestamps. Everything's transcribed and I fixed the transcription. I've fixed a lot of these little errors, any word gaps, any overlays and stuff like that. Okay, so now that our episode is finished, I want to export this episode. So I'm going to do this from the publish button here. For some reason, you may have to click on export again, and this give this will give you all of the different options. There's ways to just, you know, export it right to YouTube. But for my purposes, I still do a few things in Premiere Pro. Now that it's all edited, I do some like YouTube overlays when it shows, you know, to subscribe and stuff like that. So I export the full episode video and audio, and I'll tell you why in a moment. So here's all of our settings, and you can see I'm exporting the current composition. You can export all compositions if you want, but in this case, I just want to export the full episode. I'm going to export it as an MP4 video. The audio will be two channels, sample rate is 48,000, and here's the reason why I have to export the audio separately. So for some reason, Descript maxes out at 256 kilobytes. Um, 320 is kind of like the minimum. Otherwise, it kind of starts sounding like it's underwater, kind of has a weird sound. So I export the audio separately. You also want to, for my case anyways, remember I already mixed and mastered my audio, so I turn the normalization off. If you want, you can normalize it to peak or I believe, yeah, I think peak is the best. So that'll bring everything up and it'll make all the waveforms much larger and, and everything will be um, the same volume. So you can normalize it if you want. I personally don't do it here. And then of course, for my dimensions, I just do it as 1080p. You could also export it as 4K if you have 4K and the video quality, you wanna make sure you're set to high, okay? Then you would export it. So the other thing I do here is then export the audio. So this is important for two things. So obviously for most podcast apps, if you're going to be publishing on Spotify or Apple podcasts, obviously you need just the audio. I also have it synced up here. So I use higher quality audio uh, in Premiere Pro after where I then add the audio to that video. But if you want to export the audio, my um, recommendation is to always export a wave version. Again, this can be two channels because it's the full mixed down episode. Sample rate 44.1. And again, you can either normalize it to peak or off. In my case, I have it off. And I'll export this wave version and I will add it to the video after. And then, of course, if you want to just export an MP3 version, you can do that as well. Again, for some reason, this maxes out to 256 kilobytes, which maybe works out uh, if there are like bandwidth limits to your podcast host. And once again, I don't normalize, but you definitely could normalize either peak or like negative 14. So you just go and export it and then you'll have your episode complete. So I'm also going to show you how to export the transcript. So you might want to use this for your website. You want to maybe export the captions to use for Premiere Pro or even upload to YouTube, which is super handy for SEO and discoverability. So, you know, you go back up to the publish here, hit the export, and we're going to do a file export this time. So when it comes to just exporting for your website or you just want the transcript, just go into export text. And how like this is the way I do it. You can do it however you want. Um, I export it to a, a doc. You can also do a rich text format. So I just do docx. And if you want to have the timestamps on it, like you can see on my website, I have timestamps. I do it at the paragraph break. So anytime there's a paragraph break, that's where I'll show the timestamp. You can also show the timestamp whenever there's someone speaking. So whenever it shows someone's name, you can show the timestamps there. Or you can do it at, at intervals. So if you want to show the timestamp, like let's just say every like 10 seconds. So after every 10 seconds, 50 seconds, whatever, it'll show it at that interval. So I personally just do it at paragraph breaks. I think that's good enough. You could also add a timestamp uh, offset here. And then of course you just export it. The other option is to export subtitles. So when it comes to YouTube and, and Premiere Pro, you want to export it as SRT. Um, there's also VTT, but SRT is pretty standard. You can uh, set how many maximum characters you want. You might just have to play around with that. And I like to have maximum of two lines per card. And you can also include the speaker names in the subtitles if you would like. 
again, helps with discoverability. This is great for uploading to YouTube. So there you have it. There is also the subtitles and captions. Okay, there you have it. That's how you edit a podcast in a nutshell using Descript. If you want me to go more in depth on any of the little topics or tools or advanced features of Descript, just let me know in the comments down below. If there's anything that I didn't cover or anything that wasn't clear, just hit me up on Twitter. I'm at Josh Gonzalez underscore. I'm happy to help in any way I can. It's been amazing. I love Descript. It's been speeding up my workflow. So I hope that this overview helped you. If this video helps you, please give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe because I'm going to make some more videos on Descript. So once again, if there's any other topics you want covered, I'm happy to do it. There's a lot more that Descript can do, and I really just want to cover the basics of this video. So thanks, guys. Thanks for watching and hit me up on Twitter. Once again, I'm Josh Gonzalez underscore. You can message me anytime. Happy to help. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.